What's up guys, we're here to give our WrestleMania 34 predictions, but in this video we're going to do a little bonus as we give our NXT TakeOver New Orleans predictions, which takes place Saturday, the day before WrestleMania. Yeah man, so um, I'm sure you guys already know we are professional wrestling fans. Fun fact for you guys, we were actually wrestling fans before we were Steelers fans, before we were football fans. Fun fact for you. Yeah, if you guys are just here for wrestling, if you guys aren't a fan of football or Steelers related, just don't mind the background. We're still working on getting a wrestling background while we talk about wrestling. Yeah, we're hoping to get it by SummerSlam or probably Money in the Bank. Since Money Bank is now a dual branded pay per view, since yeah. it's probably now a big pay per view for WWE, mm -hmm. we're hoping to get a wrestling background for uh, Money in the Bank or something. So, which we will give our predictions for Money in the Bank and SummerSlam, basically for the all major pay per views. It's really right, it. exactly. Um, so, but yeah. yeah, just please excuse the background. Anyway, man, let's just get right into it. We'll start with NXT Takeover. By the way, if you guys aren't ex uh, if you guys aren't familiar with NXT, we extremely highly recommend you watch NXT. NXT is extremely thousand times better than Raw it and SmackDown. It is absolutely better television, absolutely better programming than Raw and SmackDown. It's, it's better than WWE. Yeah, it's better than Raw and SmackDown combined. It's, it's absolutely, it's, it's, it's amazing, it's fantastic, it's got great wrestling, it's it's got a great storyline, it's just it absolutely phenomenal. It makes sense, it makes everything important, it's it's everything that WWE doesn't do, or what Vince doesn't do. If you guys right. are familiar with NXT, NXT is really the developmental brand for WWE, who uh, it brings in new talent like... Like, like, like when when uh, uh, when we got Neville, when we got Finn Balor, when we got Seth Rollins, Big E, when we got uh, Sasha Banks, Bailey, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Oscar, Shinsuke Nakamura, you know, guys like that. They all came from NXT to basically develop and become the superstars that they are today. Right. So, uh, and it's run by uh, Triple H himself, and he is an absolute genius. And I cannot wait for the day that he takes Vince McMahon's throne. Yeah, I cannot wait. But anyway, let's just go into an NXT takeover. We had we start with Andrade Cien Almas versus or Andrade Cien Almas with Zelina Vega versus Aleister Black, which is for the NXT Championship. This should be an extremely fantastic match. This, man. Should, I this, this wait match for this. should absolutely be phenomenal. One of the one one of the best matches I am definitely looking forward to this week. Absolutely, man. We're talking Andrade Cien Almas, NXT Champion. Um, he, 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 is one, he is a fantastic in-ring performer. Probably one of the best, if not the best in NXT right now. After the match he had with Johnny Gargano at TakeOver Philadelphia, you, you're you going to bet this match with Aleister Black is going to be damn good too. Probably not as good, but very close. Right, exactly. Either and way, I, it's going to be a damn good match. And Aleister Black himself, he is a fantastic in-ring performer as well. One of the best in NXT as well. This match is going to be fantastic. I can't wait. And I think we all know that Aleister Black is going to be winning this match. Yep. And he'll take over the NXT Championship. Rightfully so, because he deserves it. I'm going and, Aleister Black. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of both of these guys. Um, it is Aleister Black's time, though. And I'm excited to see what they do with Almas on the main roster. Hopefully, they don't fuck him up. Yeah. He has fantastic talent. And him with Selena Vega. <laughs> when, when, when it, I, since Selena Vega has been with him, he's been absolutely better. Absolutely. And those two can really be something special on the main roster. I hope that's the case. Yep. I really hope it's the case. But anyway, Cien Almas versus Aleister Black for the NXT Championship. We have Aleister Black. Aleister Black. Next match is Ember Moon versus Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's Championship. This match should be interesting. It will probably not be as good as uh, the other matches on the show, but it should be interesting to see how the match uh, plays out, especially with Ember Moon's arm. You know how Shayna Baszler's attacked her arm throughout the feud, throughout the rivalry, mm -hmm. starting back in... Uh, Back in January when the Baszler uh, debuted yeah. uh, in NXT. I mean, so. Amber Moon is absolutely a fantastic performer. One of the best women's wrestlers in WWE. Absolutely. Absol de absolutely, definitely. And uh, obviously she is the champion going up against Shanna Baszler, who still she's still a little green in the ring, but she's getting better. She's getting... Right. I mean, she's a former uh, UFC fighter. Right, of course. And I really like how they are developing and how they're showcasing Shanna Baszler. It's been fantastic how they've made her look intimidating and, you know, just... Everything like that, you know, you know, it's they kind of, cause you know how Brock Lesnar is, you know, he comes in, makes a few appearances, squash, one, two, three, all done. Right, awesome. exactly. That's Shayna not Baszler, that's, that's not how a, a UFC fighter should be booked. The way Shayna Baszler is being booked is exactly how she should be. Yeah. Booked. Not only is she wrestling, but she's kind of showcasing her dominance in the ring as well, which is why I want to see from from uh, those UFC turn into wrestlers. Type performance. Right, exactly. And we oh. could very well see that as well with Ronda Rousey. Right. Uh, for this match, though, um, I have Shayna Baszler. I think she's gonna take. Uh, the title from Moon, and I think Moon's going to go to the main roster. Probably go to Raw. Yeah, I'm going to go with Baszler. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure we'll get a Kyrie Sane versus Shayna Baszler match for the title at the next takeover, mm -hmm. which is probably NXT Chicago, I believe. So, yeah. Now, this upcoming match right here is I am absolutely excited for this one. It's the Undisputed Era, Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, who are the 
NXT Tag Team Champions going up against the Authors of Pain going up and going up against Roderick Strong and Pete Dunne for the NXT Tag Team Championship in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Trophy. This is going to be a phenomenal match, man. This is, I, I cannot wait for this match. If you guys saw NXT last night, and you guys saw the match that the Authors of Pain and Rock and Strong and Dunn put on. Imagine what the match will be with Undisputed Era added to it. The match is going to be phenomenal. Seriously. Absolutely. And uh, uh, Bobby Fish was supposed to be in this match, but he suffered a knee injury. He's going to be out for close to a year about. Yeah, so Adam Cole, you know, they're using the Freebird bird role, so Cole is going to be uh, taking the spot. Right. And um, for this match, uh, first of all, I'm excited for this match. Um... For this match, though, um, I got the Undisputed Era winning. I don't see the Office of Pain winning it because I'm sure they'll be moving up after TakeOver, after WrestleMania. Uh -huh. And I don't think they're going to give the titles to a random pairing of Roger Strong and Pete Dunne, especially since Dunne already has the United Kingdom Championships. Right, exactly. So I got the Undisputed Era winning, um, although it should be a very interesting and fantastic And I'm match. actually going to make a bold prediction. I have Roderick Strong joining forces with the Undisputed Era. Do you really? I do. No, I can see I it. think he's going to turn his back on Pete Dunn, and he's going to uh, attack uh, the Authors of Pain along with uh, Cole and Riley. I, I think Roderick Strong is going to join the Authors of Pain. You know what? I mean, not the Authors of Pain, excuse me, the Undisputed Era, because Bobby Fish is out. You know, the Undisputed Era is going to want that third member. And I think, Roger see, Strong. I think secretly Strong is going to join them. Right, and honestly, I think he'll he'll talk to do one of Strong. First, I mean, Strong is a fantastic MMA competitor in himself. He is dev he's been one of the best developing talent of this year. Um, and him with the Undisputed Era could give him more light, more exposure, and could really make him not only a better character, but a better performer as well. Right, exactly. So, you know, I could see that happening. I would love that. And it would really kind of mold the uh, Undisputed Era into, you know, kind of like the new NWO where they bring in uh, talent, you know, like, like... Like they increase the numbers with their staples. Right. So, I could see that happening. I think it'd be very interesting. I can see it happening. But on the speed of the era, I'm going with them. Yeah. And this match, <laughs> this match, uh, well, first of all, we're excited for every match on the show, to be honest with you, because I actually take over. First of all, takeovers completely blow the main event. Of the well, main, whether the main. it's Money in the Bank, WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, any, any pay-per-view. They, they, they blow that out of the water. That's on the weekend, yeah. Take, like, takeover is absolutely phenomenal. Takeover is always better than the WWE show. It will literally be the best show you'll ever see all year. And the thing is, there's never been a bad takeover. And this, with the match card, this could be the best takeover of all time. Yeah, this and upcoming excited. this upcoming match could very well steal the freaking weekend. We have a ladder match for the inaugural NXT North American Championship. Which, by the way, if you did not see the new design for the North American Championship, it looks absolutely fantastic. It looks beautiful. The design is great. It has that little old school touch to it. I love it. It's absolutely amazing. It's it's, it's fantastic. It's phenomenal. I love it. But anyway, for this match, we have Adam Cole. Yes, he's doing double duty. Versus EC3, top one percent. Killian Dane, who is very under, who's he's a very underrated talent. If you got, got his size, absolutely. I don't know how he can do the moves he does. Yeah, if you saw him in War Games, that match at War Games, he was probably MVP of that match. He, he probably was. He was phenomenal, man. And I, I can't wait to see his dominance in this ladder match. Along with the dominance in this ladder match, I can't wait to see Lars Sullivan versus Lars Sullivan versus the debuting Ricochet, who is one of the best talent in the world right now, uh -huh. versus Velveteen Dream. I'm extremely high on Velveteen Dream, and I actually have him winning this match. Adam Cole, I don't think he's going to win the title, especially since he's already a tag team competitor. EC3, I don't really see him winning it in his first uh, match. Killian Dane, Lars Sullivan, they're probably going to feud after this. Ricochet, uh, same with EC3, I don't see him winning in his first match. And Velveteen Dream... Even though with Ricochet, it's a big possibility. Of you course, of course. Uh, and with Velveteen Dream, not only does he deserve it, but I think he'll win it. Because, I mean, you've seen the work he's done with his character throughout the past year. He's been phenomenal, and he really deserves it. And I think him as a North American champ champion would be phenomenal. Imagine the competitors you can face. Ricochet, EC3, Adam Cole if he wants to. Maybe we get a Roger Strong. A Pete Dunne. A Cassius Ono, a Pete Dunne. Maybe a Tyler Bate. Just imagine the matches we can have Absolutely for the title. Absolutely phenomenal. It, it's it's awesome. And I, NXT is literally the place to be. Exactly. And I love the addition of the uh, North American Championship because it gives guys like... Like a Velveteen Dream and a Ricochet and an EC3 and a Cash Zono and a Tyler Bate and all those guys that that can't be able to fight for the main NXT Championship. They had they have another title to try to get. Exactly. So, I, I love the addition of this title. I, I I'm ex I'm extremely excited for this match. I have the Velveteen Dream winning it. 
Absolutely, I'm going with Velveteen Dream. But a guy I could I could see winning it though. I can see Ricochet winning it though. I definitely can. Somehow, and yeah, I could, to come in his first uh, match and just win it all. Yeah, it'd be amazing. Well, I could see, what I could see happening at the end of the match. I can see Ricochet about to win it. You know, about to reach for the title, and then Velveteen just pushes him off, giving that little heel persona there. And right. then we get Velveteen Dream winning it, and then maybe we get Velveteen Dream versus Ricochet. Maybe we get that feud going into NXT Takeover Chicago. Imagine that match. That 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 would be phenomenal. I will love that, man. But I can't wait for this match. We got Velveteen Dream. Velveteen Dream. In this match, um, I think we'll steal the entire weekend. I really do. This All these stop, matches man. have the ability to steal the entire weekend. But this match specifically. And I, I I, do think that this match should have been for an NXT Championship, but I am glad we are getting this match. We have an unsanctioned match. Johnny Gargano versus his former best friend, his former DIY tag team partner, Tommaso Ciampa. If Gargano wins, he will be reinstated to NXT. However, if Ciampa wins, Gargano will be banned from NXT forever. I don't know who's going to win this match. I don't know how I really don't gonna... either. It's, it's very unpredictable. And this storyline has been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. The thing is, are, are they... Are they ready to move Gargano? Oh, first of all, Gargano is obviously ready for the main roster, but do they want to, to move him up yet? Do they want him to win that championship to give him that big Daniel Bryan like, you know, feeling? Right. You know, winning the title, overcoming the odds, and everything, you know? Right. Um, I don't know who's going to win this match. I'm excited for this match. This could very well be a five star match. Um, Just like it was with uh, Gargano and all this. Right. Um, I can't wait for this match. This match is going to be phenomenal. And I'm excited to see what they do with this match. I wonder, they could go outside the arena, they could go... This match could literally be, like, uh, I guess you can say a remake of Shawn Michaels and Triple H with that unsanctioned match I guess back you, in yeah. 2002 with SummerSlam. If we get anything like that with these two competitors, it's going to be phenomenal. Absolutely. This match is uh, going to be fantastic. I don't know who's going to win this match. And the build-up for this has been amazing. You know, it all comes back, back to Chicago. Where? Uh, back in May when DIY broke up and Ciampa... Backstabbed, uh, stabbed Gar Johnny Gargano on the back and just put him through a table off the announce table, and him uh, attacking Gargano after uh, Philadelphia when Gargano failed to get the NXT Championship. And then Gargano cost or uh, Champa costing Gargano the NXT Championship and again had, when Gargano put his NXT career on the line against almost for the NXT Championship. So and Gargano has just like been outside of the performance center waiting for. Trump, yeah. uh, he uh, even showed up at his house at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, the thing is, I love the build. I love the feud. I love the story. I love everything about this feud. And everything's going to collide. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a complete fantastic ending. So, I have Tommaso Ciampa. I don't think Gargano's going to win. I think he's going to move up to the main roster. I don't know where. He could go to 205 Live. He could go to Raw. He could go to SmackDown. I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to dis disagree with you. I think Gargano's going to win this thing. The only thing Gargano has left to do is to win the NXT Championship. I just, I just don't see Gargano losing. He lost four times to Andrade Cien Almas. I just don't see him losing to Ciampa. I don't. I don't know. I mean, we could see. We, I, I, the thing is, I don't know who's going to win this match. I don't know what they're going to do with Gargano or Ciampa. I don't know what they're going to do after this match. I don't know what their plan is. So that's one thing I love about this match, unpredictability. Exactly. But I'm going to go with Johnny Gargano. I'm going to have him winning this match and getting his job back. I'm gonna have Ciampa. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna move Gargano up to the main roster. Although I think he should stay in NXT for a little bit and try to win the NXT Championship, give him that Daniel Bryan ending. Um, and NXT crowd really deserves him winning the championship, and he deserves it as well. Absolutely. So, but I got Ciampa. I'm so. going with Gargano. And guys, as the NXT Takeover New Orleans predictions now on to WrestleMania 34. Yeah, man. Um, WrestleMania 34. Um, we are not as excited for WrestleMania 34 as we are with TakeOver. Um, but, specifically. It, it's, but it's still looking like a very nice show. Yeah, it's looking. the match card is looking very good. You know, we have AJ Styles versus Nakamura, rightfully so. We have Charlotte versus Oscar, rightfully so. We have Miz, Rollins versus Balor for the IC title, rightfully so. We have Daniel Bryan making his in-ring uh, comeback, teaming with Shane McMahon against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. We have the Usos versus the New Day versus the Bludgeon Brothers, rightfully so. Um, all three teams definitely deserve to be on the main show. Um, like, th and we got Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali for the vacant Cruiserweight Championship. Like, like, this show looks like it's, it could be one of the best WrestleManias if it lives up to the hype. Absolutely. Uh, the thing is that sucks, though, is that WWE hasn't built it correctly. They, they never do. They never, never do. Unfortunately, they don't. Um, but WrestleMania, um, should be an interesting show. I'm actually somewhat excited for WrestleMania. Um, and, of course, we have 
13 matches on the card, three of them being pre-show matches, so we have 10 matches on the main show. Um, we'll start with the first match, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I'll go over the participants as of right now, as of Thursday, April 5th, 2018. We have the Revival Dash Wilder and Scott Dawson. We have Baron Corbin, Mojo Riley, Ty Dillinger, Woken Matt Hardy, Dolph Ziggler, Fandango, Tyler Breeze, Goldust, Heath Slater, Rhino, Zack Ryder, and Primo Colon. So far... Um, in the match. Um, I expect some NXT uh, guys to be in there. I expect some... I can see some legends appearing just for the heck of it. Just to add more people into the match. Honestly, for the entire pre-show, we don't care about two of the three matches in there. I mean, we'll still watch them. We, we won't care because... Right, but for this match... Because, because first of all, Andre John Moore by Royal has done nothing. It's, do, it's done nothing for Cesaro. Cesaro's career has barely been enhanced. He's been in the tag team division his entire career. Baron Corbin, I mean, he looked promising, but then they fucked him over last year with the money. Big show. I don't know why they gave the big show. She got into Sandow. Yet again, that would never benefit his career. And um, Mojo Raleigh. He's done nothing except a, uh, a pointless heel turn. Andre it, John Moore by Royal means nothing. It's literally a match where... Jobbers and people that are not on the show get on the show. That's all it is. Um, for this match, I don't know. I could see Elias winning it if he's in the match, but he's not in the match. I, right I, now. I, don't, I don't think he's going to be in the match um, because I heard he's going to do like some sort of music session or something. Oh, like some sort of mini concert or something. Right. Sort of, um, um, I can see Dolph Ziggler getting the victory. I do. So yeah, I'm going to go with Ziggler. Maybe Ziggler. Maybe. May, hold on. You know, I can actually see them giving it to Dillinger. Because the crowd, you know, chants 10, 10, 10. Ty Dillinger is extremely over yet. They won't showcase him on the show. I can see them giving Ty Dillinger the win just to make the fans a little happy. Although, I'll do nothing for Ty Dillinger. I have Ty Dillinger winning it because that's WWE do I'm, doing. I'm going Dolph Ziggler. Does it matter? No. No. No, it don't. <laughs> All right, next match. WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal. Yeah, we'll go over to uh, participants right now. We have Sasha Banks. Becky Lynch, Liv Morgan, Naomi, Natalia, Ruby Riot, Sarah Logan, Bailey, Lana. Mandy. Why? Why is Lana in there? I don't know. Uh, really, she should be a manager for Rusev Day. That's how I see it. Uh, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Mickey James, and Carmella. Um, Becky Lynch. Be yeah. Yet again, they never push her. They never push her. I don't, I don't understand why. First of all, the the feud between Sasha and Bailey should definitely be on this match or on this card for the Raw Women's Championship. That should be the Raw Women's Championship match, not Nia versus Alexa. Seriously. I, I really don't understand why WWE would go with that match instead of Banks and Bailey. I don't know. You, you Especially look, after the work they did in NXT. Yeah, and the thing is, you you look at the feud between Bailey and Sasha. You look at that feud compared to Nia and Alexa's feud. It's a lot better, and it makes sense. They're fighting over the title, fighting over to be the best. Wow. While Alexa and Naya are oh. fighting, oh, she made fun of me. Oh, my God, she's not my friend anymore. That's for the title? That's for the women's title? They haven't even showcased that they want to, they, that Naya wants to get the women's title. Yeah. So what the hell? I can understand that being, like, some sort of motivational, Naya being a motivational figure to all those um, people that, you know, get the same... Abuse and name calling, which is extremely unacceptable in this world. Right. I can of course. I can understand her being like a role model or an uh, uh, influential and inspirational figure. I can understand that. But it shouldn't be a storyline for the Raw Women's Championship, especially at WrestleMania. Yeah. Um. Makes no sense. But for the Women's Battle Royal, Becky, Becky Lynch, Becky Lynch. I guess. Um. I don't think the Battle Royal matters. I don't think it will enhance anyone's career. But Becky, I guess. Becky Lynch. I guess. And the third match, which I think should be on the main show, and if you saw 205 Live this past week, you can ex you, you can see why. I mean, you look at Buddy Murphy versus Kalisto. Talent like that and 205 Live after its revival since Triple H just took over in the tournament, 205 Live and talent like this needs more exposure. And what better way to give them more exposure than WrestleMania on the main show? But no, you put him on the pre-show. I, I don't get it. Like the match that Buddy Murphy and Kaliso had is exactly what Cruiserweight wrestling is all about. Exactly, and that talent, that show, and everything about it needs more exposure. But no, they want to put him on the pre-show. That 16-man tournament for just to be on the pre-show, and I actually heard it's going to open the pre-show. Why is it going to open? The least you can do is close, 
has this match closed the pre-show where more more people are watching, where more people are in the in the arena. Exactly. It's seriously. It's like it's like a disrespect to the talent. I don't get it. This this match could very well steal the show. It could. Yeah, this match is gonna be phenomenal. I'm excited for this match. And the um, match we're talking about is Cedric Alexander versus Mustafa Ali for the vacant WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Yeah. This match um, is gonna be phenomenal. We know it is. I just I don't understand why this is on the pre show. It shouldn't be. You, you remember WrestleMania 15 when the Hardcore Championship opened the show and it got you excited and it set the tone for the show? Yes, that's, I do. What, the, that's what the Cruiserweight Championship could do this year. It, it can literally open. It could open WrestleMania. It could set the tone for the whole show. It, it could can, excite the fans like like WCW did with the Cruiserweights. Exactly. They always open with the Cruiserweights and it got you excited for the show. It set the tone for the show. They can simply do the same thing with the Cruiserweights, especially since the Cruiserweights are extremely phenomenal and they need more exposure. Why, exactly. And better. Ex- why not get better exposure than opening the show? Get you excited. You're like, hey, man, the, that, sh- that shit is fucking great. I want to see more of that. Exactly. But I, I don't understand WWE. I really don't. Uh, for this match, I, got I guess I guess WWE is still the land of the giants. According to Vince, it is. We need to get the fuck out of the office and have Triple H take over. Anyway, this match, I'm going with Cedric Alexander. Uh, yeah, Cedric Alexander, I think he definitely deserves it. Um... Way overdue. Um, Mustafa Ali is great talent, too. But I think his time will come later this year. But I think Cedric Alexander will win it, rightfully so. This match should be a good match. Oh, I'm yeah, excited absolutely. for this match. I'm really excited for this match. So, I got Cedric Alexander. Now, on to the main show, guys. We'll start from the bottom up. We have Daniel Bryan making his in-ring return. And Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. If Owens and Zayn win, they will be rehired to SmackDown Live. But if they lose, they will no longer be on SmackDown whatsoever. And I think that's going to happen. I have Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon winning. And I have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn going to Raw. And I think because Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are great together. That's, they're phenomenal. They, they could benefit the Raw Tag Team Division exactly. as well. Because the Raw Tag Team Division has nobody besides the bar. Yeah, it, it, the Raw Tag Team Division sucks. It, it's dead as nothing. While if you add Owens and Zayn, add some excitement, add some experience, add depth, and helps that division. Right, exactly. And I'd love to see them run the division for a few you know, a few months, and then, you know, eventually they'll start to wear down and everything. Right, exactly. And I don't see Daniel Bryan losing his first match back. Yeah. I don't. Um, now, Shane McMahon apparently had diverticulitis and a staph infection. He was diagnosed with a hernia. I'm not sure if those were storyline purposes or if that was real. Li- the hernia, I can see storyline purpose. and But the staph infection and the diverticulitis, no. If that's the uh, case, uh, then attack- why is he wrestling? I know. Apparently he's cleared, but I'm not sure. Unless... They want to make unpredictable hand to WrestleMania, and Darren Bryan has a secret tag team partner. Possibly, and maybe that partner. Um, I don't know. I don't know who that would be. Maybe Gargano. Maybe they bring Gargano and have him get that big spotlight. Maybe I don't know. That'd be fantastic. Um, but I'm gonna go with Darren Bryan and Shane McMahon. I'm gonna go with Darren Bryan and Shane McMahon as well. Uh, however, I've heard rumors that Shane McMahon might turn heel. Hmm. I wouldn't mind that at all. It's possible. Like, like he was. You know, he was with Kevin Owens and Zayn the whole time. Like, they were just faking, you know, their but, rivalry. But the question is, why would he do that? Why would he Why would he harm Daniel Bryan like that? What does he have a problem with Daniel Bryan for? I don't know. So, I don't know. Uh, something that could happen, but I have Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon. I mean, I don't expect Daniel Bryan to lose in his first match. So, right. yeah, I got Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon. So, you're going with Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon, but you're wearing the Kevin Owens show t-shirt. It's the Kevin Owens show, guy. No, it's the Kevin and Sammy show! Damn it. All right. Or it will be on Raw, so... Anyway, guys, next match we have Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey versus Triple H and Stephanie McMahon in a mixed tag match. Uh, this is obviously Ronda Rousey's first uh, WrestleMania, or not only WrestleMania, WWE wrestling match. And this is the perfect match for her. It is. Because, I mean, do you expect her to go on a one-on-one match and have no experience and completely embarrass herself? Well, you need, you need somebody to fill in the match for her so she doesn't have to do all the work. And Kurt Angle, you know, being her partner... Going up against Triple H with Stephanie as Triple H's partner yeah, is, is that, perfect. Yeah, um, and it will help. Um, the thing I'm worried about this match, I don't know how much Angle and Triple H can do in this match. Yeah, because... It can't always be about him the whole time. Right. Uh, we're going to have to see Ronda and Stephanie get in there. But, uh, well, first of all, I don't think this match will do anything. I don't think this match will be entertaining at all. Uh, the only thing that will be entertaining is watching Stephanie tap out like a little bitch. Uh, <laughs> but, um, I mean, Kurt Angle, I mean, he's, in his, he's close to 50, and... 
you know, he's had several neck injuries, and do you expect him to do too much? Triple H, I'm not worried about. Stephanie McMahon, she's not an active wrestler. And Ronda Rousey, she's never wrestled before, so I don't expect this match to be anything. Right, exactly, but, but I'm going with Angle and Rousey. Yeah, obviously. Do you expect Ronda Rousey to lose in the first match? To Stephanie McMahon? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good laugh. Yeah, so, turning on Ronda Rousey, so, yeah. Next match, man, I'm excited for this one. And I think this could, ma- could be match of the night, honestly, at WrestleMania. The Usos, Jimmy and Jay, obviously, as the champions, versus the New Day versus the Bludgeon Brothers in a triple threat tag team match for the WWE SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship. I am really excited for this match. After the work that the Usos and the New Day have done throughout the whole, basically the whole year of 2017 with their rivalry. Which was a fantastic feud, by the way. And, and adding the Bludgeon Brothers, who are very underrated and very fucking good in the ring, and too. very dominant. That's going to be some exciting shit, man. Seriously. It's, it'll probably be the best tag team match on this show, yeah. without a doubt. First of all, I'm extremely excited to hear that the Usos are finally on the main show. They they rightfully deserve it. They're probably the best tag team in the WWE right now. Since their heel turn, they have been completely phenomenal and consistent. Week in, week out, in the ring, on the mic, absolutely phenomenal. They deserve it. They are probably the best tag team in WWE and, right and now. You can just One te- of the best in the world. Right, and you can just tell by their work with the New Day. Absolutely. Phenomenal. And, um... Really, honestly, I don't understand why the New Day is in this match. I don't think it's needed. Honestly, I think the New Day should have been... Or I think the New Day should have just had a complete open challenge for any tag team. And then you have the Authors of Pain debut at WrestleMania. Give them a big spotlight. Give them give them a big win. Yeah, you, have, you, have, you have uh, the New Day put over the Authors of Pain. Right, and then you have the Authors of Pain be built on Raw or SmackDown or wherever. Right, want. right, exactly. More than likely Raw. Um... But I think that's what they should have done. But either way, this match I'm going with the Bludgeon Brothers. Yeah, I think the Bludgeon Brothers are going to win. Um, I think they deserve it. I'm excited to see what they do with the titles. Uh, I'm excited to see their dominance with the titles. So, um, and honestly, I can see Sandy, uh, Sandy from NXT de- uh, debuting uh, SmackDown after uh, uh, SmackDown after WrestleMania, and then challenging the Bludgeon Brothers. Can you imagine that? That'd be fantastic. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be an exciting match, seriously. It would be. Um, but yeah, we got the Bludgeon Brothers. Um, I'm sure the New Day will remain on SmackDown. I think the Usos will go to uh, Raw. Which yeah, because I heard there's well. there's supposed to be this another superstar shakeup or another draft. Yeah, so um, yeah, we got the Bludgeon Brothers winning. Yeah, Bludgeon Brothers. So next match we have Cesaro and Sheamus, the tag team champions, of course, for the Raw tag titles. We have Cesaro and Sheamus versus Braun Strowman and a. Mystery partner to be determined for the Raw Tag Team Championship. Now, the partner that I want Strowman to pick is Samoa Joe. So do I. I think they'd be perfect together. It gives something to do with Joe. It puts them on the show. It'd be extremely entertaining with their... uh, with their dominance. And it's something new on the Raw Tag Team Division. And Samoa Joe deserves it. He deserves gold. He deserves a big spotlight. He deserves to be on WrestleMania because last year he was he was healthy as a horse and he was left off the shelf. For some reason. And he deserves... Samoa Joe is fantastic, seriously. So, he deserves a big spotlight. He deserves gold. And it'd be perfect with Braun Strowman. But the, but the person... And honestly, it, it would help... Joe as well, give him more exposure, more spotlight with him being paired with probably the most over guy on Raw and Braun Strowman. Right, exactly. So, um... But but the guy that I think WWE is going to have Braun Strowman team up with is the big show. Since I did hear that he signed a multi-year contract with the WWE. Yeah. After he was teasing that he was going to retire earlier this year, but he was like, no, I'm in the best shape of my life, I want to keep on wrestling, so he signs a multi-year deal with the WWE. And I can see WWE pull, totally pulling off Braun Strowman and Big Show. Why? I have no idea. Either way, I'm going with Braun Strowman and his mystery partner. Or, or Braun Strowman could just be completely partnerless and win the tag titles himself, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. But um, Strowman and his partner. Yeah. By the way, I want to add, if, if Samoa Joe is his partner, imagine Authors of Pain go to Raw. Maybe we get Braun Strowman and Samoa Joe versus the Authors of Pain for the titles. Yo, that'd be a... That'd and be a, maybe... Imagine this. Imagine this. Maybe Samoa Joe turns his back on Braun Strowman because the only way that Braun Strowman and Samoa Joe should be split is if they uh, attack each other or one of them betrays the other. Right. Maybe Samoa Joe betrays Braun Strowman and aligns himself with the Authors of Pain. Maybe he leaves Authors of Pain. Maybe he eventually goes for the titles as well, uh, for the Universal Title. And that'd be great. And maybe we get maybe we get Samoa Joe winning it, and maybe we get Braun Strowman and Samoa Joe for the title of Royal Rumble next year. Imagine that'd be that'd that. be fantastic. Imagine yes. that. Um, but yeah, we got Braun Strowman and some mystery partner. Um, could be Big Show. Could be Samoa Joe. Could be even Bobby Lashley. 
because we heard Bobby Lashley signed a contract uh, with, with WWE, WWE. but uh, it appara- apparently he's going to appear on the Raw after WrestleMania, so maybe not him, but it's possible, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. They've got Braun Strowman and whoever his partner is. Next match, I'm definitely looking forward to this match. And this, is, this is rightfully so. This Absol- match is... I, I give applause to WWE for making this match. It's Absolutely. Big. Charlotte Flair, who is the SmackDown Live Women's Champion, going against the 2018 Women's Royal Rumble winner, Asuka, for the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship. This, is, this should be a very interesting and exciting match. These two are extremely great talents. Um... I really expect that this match is going to be exciting. And I'm excited for this match. Um, it's championship versus streak is going to be, so it's it's got got going to be amazing. Yeah, it's got a nice story there. Um, and the build has been pretty interesting. Um, so, uh, this match should be very interesting, though, seriously. I, I'm excited for this match. I think we both are. Um, I have Asuka winning. I don't think she's going to lose her streak. I think she's going to win the title as she deserves to win it. And I think a big win. Uh, over Charlotte would definitely help her in her career and her streak and everything. Yeah. And she can definitely dominate on uh, SmackDown as uh, Women's Champion. Or what could happen is um, it's been teased for the last two months. Carmella could uh, cash in uh, during this match. Uh, either during or after this match. Now, if it were up to me, I'd have her cash in during the yeah, match. Yes, during the match. And pin Charlotte Flair. That way, Oscar's streak is still alive. Because are you going to have Carmella, of all people, and Oscar's streak? That is fucking stupid. Yes, Oscar loses the match, but she's not getting pinned. Therefore, her streak is still alive. Right, and maybe we get Oscar versus, versus because Carmella. People, one because day. commentators are always saying she's never been pitted, pin, she's never been pinned nor submitted. So she's never. Lost, of course. So, um, I can see Carmella cashing in. Um, however, I'd have her do it on the other championship match. Raw Women's Championship match. Yeah, which is the next match. Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax for the Raw Women's Championship. You know, Danny, I just want to say, you know, I've been thinking while we've been doing this review, I, I am actually really excited about this match coming up. I, I really think this is going to be a great match. I think that it's actually going to dethrone Charlotte and Oscar and the Women's Battle Royal as the best women's match uh, on WrestleMania, I think it's going. This, this match is going to be talked about for years and years to come. You know, it's going to be fantastic. You, you know what I mean? Can you tell I'm being fucking sarcastic? Why the fuck is this at WrestleMania? Like we said earlier. Like, are you kidding me? Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax. This is a bona fide squash match. I'd rather see Funaki wrestle a monkey than this bullshit. Are you kidding me? No, I, I, this is a squash match. Nia Jax. Next match. Yeah, Nia Jax. Um. It is a bona fide squash match. If Nia Jax can bring Oscar to her limits, imagine what she's going to do to a cowardly heel and Alexa Bliss. This is nothing. Realistically, but, yes. Yeah, logically, this is nothing but a bona fide squash match. How is this on the main show? But Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali ain't. Now Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax—they're both really good talents. They are. Uh, Alexa Bliss. Um, I'm a big fan of hers, but you know. She needs to step away from the title for a little bit. She, honestly, she never should have won it back from Sasha after SummerSlam. No, never. definitely not. She has gotten stale with that title. She has. Quite frankly, she showed a lot of Elimination Chamber to Bailey. Then Sasha Banks turned her back on Bailey either at Elimination Chamber or the night after Elimination Chamber. And then you have that match for the Raw Women's Championship. Sasha Banks versus Bailey for yeah, the title at WrestleMania. Definitely. I'd be up for that. But uh, now we're going to get this match. Like I said, these these two are really good talents. They are. It's just that these two together, they're not going to pull off a good match. Yeah, it's a bona fide squash match. Logically, yeah. And for the title, it's this not is not right. WrestleMania worthy. It, yeah, it's it, and for the title, it's not it's not right. Seriously. So Nia Jax, easily. We're, we're not hating on the talent. The talent are good, and it's not their fault that they're in this match. But it's just it doesn't fit. Not for the title. Not for the competitors. It's not for the show. Logically, it don't fit. It don't. That's all. Uh, but Nia Jax, she's going to win, and uh. Oh, honestly, no, 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 no. She's not gonna win. I have Carmella uh, cashing in. Okay, what is she? What, what, what is she gonna do then? SmackDown or Raw? Raw. Because here's the thing: WWE has been only doing it for SmackDown. And the thing is, they've never gave you any specifics on she she uh, she can only cash in on Raw or cash in on SmackDown. They never gave any specifics. And the thing is, WWE has been teasing. Carmella cashing in on Charlotte, the SmackDown Women's Champion. In reality, that's what they want you to think. In reality, they want to shock you by having Carmella cash in on Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss, whether it be during the match or after the match. I actually have it during the match to make it a little exciting, a little shocking. And yeah. 
Really, I think not only would it be a little nice change up for the Raw Women's Championship, it would be a nice change up for the Raw Women's Division. I th- I think that uh, and it would add shock to the show and to you know just the match overall. I think the match that, that's actually a great idea and it make the match. I think WWE should do that because yeah. with these brand you know with these with this, with the uh, pay per views you know join together, you know why should it only be SmackDown? Yeah, really. Yeah, yes, the briefcase was won out of SmackDown pay per view. Well, but technically SmackDown show because after James Ellsworth, you you guys get, but it shouldn't it shouldn't be about SmackDown. Right, and the thing is, they never gave any specifics. So I I, I have Carmella cashing in during this match and pinning Alexa Bliss. And honestly, I can see Nia Jax going over to SmackDown. Really, I think a changeup is needed. Nia Jax SmackDown, I think it would do decent for her. Right, uh, but and Carmella. Um, I'm not too high on Carmella, but it would make the match a little interesting. It would give Carmella a big spotlight and definitely push her and her career. So I think it would be I think it would benefit Carmella and the Raw Women's Division a little bit. Yeah, so I have Carmella cashing in during this match. Yeah, might. So, but Nia Jax. Yeah. Next match. Uh, this match is gonna be boring as fuck. Randy Orton versus Bobby Roode versus Jinder Mahal versus Rusev. Oh, by the way, guys, happy Rusev Day. Yes, happy Rusev Day. Um, Rusev should win this match, but. Um, I don't think he is. They, they, I want Rusev to win because he absolutely deserves it. Oh, yes, he deserves it. He is so over. He is the number one selling merchandise on WWE Shop. Which, which I still got to get his fucking t-shirt. Yeah, me too. I didn't even want to get the damn calendar. Yeah, seriously. I forgot they had a calendar. They yeah, got, they do. I, I think it actually got sold out within a day. Yeah, it did. That's how over he is, man. Seriously. Rusev deserves this match. But the thing is, I don't think he's going to win this match because he has a winning streak. He defeated Randy Orton to get into this match, and he just defeated Jinder, Jinder Roy Mahal. And speaking of him, I think Jinder Mahal is going to win this title at WrestleMania. Why? I don't know. But I think Jinder Mahal Because Vince win McMahon it. is so high on Jinder Mahal. That is why. Why? No idea. We're talking, we're talking about a guy that got his ass kicked by Rob Gronkowski last year, and yet he beat Randy fucking Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura for the title. It makes no sense. Yeah, applaud. Yeah, so realist, so luck, so real. Yeah, okay, whatever. Jinder Mahal fucking sucks. First of all, okay, he sucks on the mic. He sucks in the ring. He he he's been taking illegal substances. He sucks. Yeah. And Bobby Roode, I don't know why he's a face. He's better as a heel. He was great in NXT as a heel. Yeah, seriously. So, same thing with Randy Orton. He's better as a heel. I just don't understand why he's a face. I, I really don't even understand why he's a United States yeah. champion. What should happen? What should happen? Rusev should win this match. Jinder Mahal should just go the fuck away. Bobby Roode should turn heel and challenge Nakamura, or whoever the champion is for the uh, WWE championship. championship. Randy Orton should go to SmackDown, or go right back. Should go to Raw and turn heel. Yeah. That's what should happen. What would happen? Absolutely not. Because it makes too much sense for WWE. I want Rusev to win, but I don't think he, he's going to get it. So I'm going to go with Jinder Mahal. Jinder Roy Mahal it is. Unfortunately. Sadly. Our next match is for the Intercontinental Championship. The Miz, who is the champion, going against Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor. This should be a very, threat match. This should be a very interesting match. I'm excited for this match. The build for this match has been pretty interesting. Um, it could it could have been better. but Especially it, after their main event on Raw, which happened, I think, was back in May of last year. I believe which so. Which was absolutely fantastic. One of the best... Uh, Probably the best Raw main event of all last yeah, year. Yeah, mat- one of the best matches of 2017 for WWE. Right, and this match for the IC title at a big event in WrestleMania could be a very good match. Absolutely. So, um, I have Finn Balor winning it. I think he should win it because Miz, I like the Miz. He is fantastic talent, but he needs to stay away from the IC title for a little bit. Really? And about Miz- that, about that, uh, Miz is retaining. I have Miz retaining because he's talking about this, how he's going to pass Pedro Mor- Morales as combined days as the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion of all time, how he's the greatest Intercontinental Champion, he's going to be better than Mr. Perfect, he's going to be better than Randy Savage, he's going to be better than Ultimate Warrior. WWE likes to do that. They did it with Nikki Bella when she passed AJ Lee's uh, record. Undeservedly so. Yes, undeservedly. They did it with the New Day when they passed Demolition's record. They're going to do it with The Miz. That's what WWE likes to do. They like to set their fucking records. Then the next pay-per-view, they make them lose it. Which is once, once, they, once they pass a the record, they lose. What the fuck? Like, what, what, the, what the fuck is the point? Seriously. So I have Miz retaining, but I have Balor facing The Miz at Backlash and beating The Miz to become the Intercontinental Champion. You That's know, what's going to happen. I guarantee. You know what? I have to agree with you there, but what I think should happen is that, well, first of all, like I said, Miz needs to stay away from the IC title. I like The Miz. I'm a fan of Miz. I'm a fan of his talent. I'm a fan of his mic skills. I, you know, I like The Miz. Uh, but it's just, just the fact that since WrestleMania 32... Besides his rivalry with John Cena 
last year's WrestleMania. He has been in the Intercontinental Championship every time. Really? I think he should go back to SmackDown and go for the U.S. title. When he was with SmackDown, that was absolutely phenomenal, especially with his feud with uh, Dolph Ziggler and his minor feud with Daniel Bryan. Right. So, and speaking of Daniel Bryan, maybe we could get a Miz versus Daniel Bryan match eventually. Yeah, if Miz, if Miz, that's why if I Miz went, goes back to SmackDown. That's why I'd like him to go back to SmackDown. To, Plus, know. he was better at SmackDown. Yes, he was. Fantastic at SmackDown. Granted, SmackDown had better creative writers. At the time. But, yeah, you know. Uh, Seth Rollins, he's already a made man. He doesn't need the title. And honestly, I can see him going to SmackDown and challenging for the WWE title after this. Finn Balor needs it. He deserves it. He has gotten the short uh, end short, the- short end of the stick um, ever since he came back from his injury after winning the Universal title uh, a few SummerSlams ago. He deserves it. He needs the IC title. First of all, he he needs a title. He just He's too damn good with, to not have a title. Right, he exactly. needs title, and him. And win- I definitely agree with you. Yeah, and him winning the IC title at WrestleMania would not only help the IC title, it would help him. Ab- he needs it, it gives him a big WrestleMania moment, something he needs. And I can just imagine the great matches that we can get with Finn Balor as IC champion on. Uh, well, we can get a Jeff Hardy, we can get a Randy Orton, like I said, move Randy Orton to Raw, turn him heel, and have him go over, uh, have him face Balor. Maybe we get Elias. Maybe we get. Uh, who else is there? Uh, can't really think of anyone else off the top of my head, but you guys know what I mean. Right, of course. I, but but I, I think they're going to save that for Backlash when Balor beats Which is the stupid. Yes, Finn is. Balor needs a big moment, and he rightfully deserves it. Finn Balor should win it. I have Finn Balor winning, but I, I think... I'm, I'm going to go with The Miz. Yeah. Anyway, next match, guys, we have Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns for the WWE Universal Championship. This uh, We all know the ending of this one. Should we should we talk about this? Roman Reigns is gonna win. Yes. LOL. All right. Uh, yeah, Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is gonna win, and uh, honestly, f- for those wondering, do we like Roman Reigns? No, we do not. And it's not Roman Reigns' fault most of the time. It's it's Vince because he continuously tries. To, he continuously tries to push him. In the main title picture, when one he's not ready for it, and two he doesn't deserve it. He's literally being Lex Luger 2.0. Exactly, because you look at Le- you look in the you look in the early 90s when Hulk Hogan left WWE for WCW. Or w- yeah, they Vince needed because Vince we all know Vince likes Big Sway Man, Land of the Giants. Then the 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 next guy there was Lex Luger, and he had nothing to him. He had no charisma. He had no uh, personality. He had no character. Nothing to him. And he pushed him to the main picture too early, and Lex Luger was exposed. And everyone turned on Lex Luger, and that's exactly what happened to Roman Reigns. That's what's happening to Roman Reigns right now. Exactly. And the thing is, WWE continues to try to push him, and it's just it's, it's, it's ruining his career. First of all, Roman Reigns doesn't have many qualities to be the top guy. You know, he, He's getting better on the mic, I, I will say. He's and getting he's, better on the he's mic. He's not bad in the ring. But, but he's not a man that's going to lead a match. He's not the man that's going to deliver... Yeah, he, most of the time. Yeah, because you, he needs a, a big, good superstar, like like someone like an AJ Styles. Or someone like a Nakamura. To, uh... Or a to Rollins, a or match. a Balor, or a Rude. So, um... And the thing is, Roman Reigns' in-ring ability, it's not, you know... His, his in-ring ability is extremely predictable. He gets he gets beat the fuck up. He's like John Cena. He gets beat the fuck up every goddamn match, and then he makes some sort of superhero comeback, doing only five moves, and it's over. Yeah, basically. He gets carried every match. He's like John Cena, getting his ass kicked all match, and then makes superhero come back and wins the match. Basically, it's too predictable. It's too fucking boring, and it's killing Reigns. That's why many people hated Cena. Now Cena has improved in his ring and in his move set. Roman Reigns can do the same. I know he can. But the thing that can but Vince benefit won't, the, Vince won't allow it. But the thing that can benefit Reigns is a heel turn. Exactly, and I ha- and I pitched this idea to. Uh, to Bob uh, a few months ago. Imagine, because we know Roman Reigns is winning this match. And honestly, I, I'm, I'm okay with Roman Reigns winning this match because at least we have a full-time champion. We see the title that, regularly yeah, for that, the first time. That's the only benefit of this match, of Reigns winning. We see, we see the title every week from now on. Yes. Um, but, yeah, uh, going back to the heel turn for Reigns. Imagine Roman Reigns... You know, he wants a title, and you know, and then, throughout this build-up, he was, you know, fighting for the WWE Universe. He's fighting for the crowd. You know, why is a part-timer not getting uh, uh, fined or, 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 or... Why is he not appearing on the show, fighting, you know, giving the fans what they why want? Is he in, why isn't he getting any punishment? Right, and... and, and you, you know, have, we deserve to see our Universal Champion. Right, and you have the rain... You know, yeah, yeah. You have Reigns come out to open the Raw after uh, WrestleMania, right? And you ha- and you see the crowd more than likely they'll boo him. 
they'll hate on them, they'll, they'll, they'll basically be like Lashley, you know, fuck you, Roman, shut the fuck, and, you know, shit like that. Yeah. So they'll, they'll, they'll be hating on Reigns, they'll be hating on him, they'll be booing him, and then all of a sudden Reigns puts a, he has a little smirk on his face, right? And he puts the mic up to his, to, uh, he puts, he puts the mic up to his face to talk, and all of a sudden, in a very aggressive and loud tone, he just says, shut up. I fought for you people, and yet you still turn your back on me. I tried to fight for you. I tried to do what was right, and yet you guys still boom me. You guys still turn your back on me. Well, you know what? Fuck you. It's all about me now. Imagine that. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. It can benefit his career, and him as a heel would make me invested in him because he would be perfect as a heel. He would be. He would get legit heat, and he honestly, he, he, he would, he just fits as a heel. He, he does. I'm he, not saying that because of how the crowd, you know, boos at him. I, he just looks like a natural heel. And he, it would benefit his career because I think he'd do wonders as a heel. I'm just saying, but look at The Rock. Look at The Rock. WWE tried to push him as a babyface, but the crowd didn't like it. So they turned him as a heel, and look what the fuck it did with The Rock. Exactly. I'm not saying when Reigns turns face again, it, people are going to cheer him. I'm just saying it benefited the, rock, the Rock's career. Exactly, and it could do the same for, for Reigns. So I think I think he'll turn his needed for Reigns, and uh, I ho- I hope WWE or someone from WWE is watching. Highly doubt, but you know I just I'm just throwing that idea out there. I think I think we'll do one for Reigns. I think the crowd would actually be more invested with Reigns. Absolutely. So, uh, but yeah. yeah, Roman Reigns. Yeah. Now time for the main event, which should be the main event, and I predict will be the main event. And this is rightfully this this match. I'm extremely excited for this match. Will probably be the match of the weekend, match of the night. This match, I I'm excited for this fucking match. Absolutely. AJ Styles, who is the WWE Champion, going up against the 2018 Men's Royal Rumble winner, Shinsuke Nakamura. We are getting the rematch from Russell Kingdom 10 from the Tokyo Dome. Which we still have yet to watch that match. Yeah, I, but be- I believe New Japan put uh, the match on their official YouTube page, so we're probably going to have to watch that eventually. But We'll probably it- watch it for the Hall of Fame tomorrow. Yeah, probably, but th- this match is going to be fantastic. It should be fantastic. Oh, we know it can. There should be no reason why WWE would have to hold their true talent back. No, yeah, exactly. And this match, they keep they keep saying that this is the dream match. This is the match we all we all wanted to see at WrestleMania. Right. For the WWE cha- for the main prize in the WWE. Mm-hmm. So. There should be no reason why WWE should hold these guys back. Exactly. Especially yeah. when it comes to AJ Styles. And the thing is, I don't think Styles and Nakamura are going to appreciate that. I think they're going to go out there and just fucking deliver a, a four-and-a-half, five-star classic. Like they, like we know they can. And I'm excited for this match. And I think Shinsuke Nakamura is going to win this match, rightfully so. I think he deserves it. I think he needs it. And a big win in the main event at WrestleMania against AJ Styles for the to win the WWE Championship would boost him and his character and his career and everything. And I think he would be... A fantastic champion on SmackDown. Right. And maybe we get Styles moving over to Raw. Right. So. Absolutely. So Shinsuke Nakamura. Either way, it should be a fantastic match. It should it should main event and end WrestleMania. Absolutely. Anyway, guys, those are our NXT TakeOver and WrestleMania 34 predictions. Give us your predictions in the comments below. Um, NXT TakeOver should be a fantastic show. WrestleMania should deliver a, a good show or possibly a great show knowing about the card. Also, I'm, t- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We forgot to mention one match. I know it hasn't been announced yet, but we know what's going to happen. It's the match. Uh, it's one of the matches I am looking forward to. Probably not going to deliver. Probably not going to be a great match, but it's truly fucking interesting and Absolutely. very. It's something that will keep you invested, and and it will when you watch WrestleMania. Absolutely. John Cena versus the returning American Badass Undertaker. I know we're going to get the American Badass after all the comments that Cena is going to. All the comments I've seen has said, you know, that you left your balls at home. If you were if you were broken down, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be posting workout videos on your wife's Instagram. Like, if if Taker was going to return as a phenom, you figure we would see him right now. You figure we would hear a gong or a lightning strike or smoke or see a druid or a casket come down or a cryptic message. No, we haven't seen that yet. That can only mean one thing: we are getting Mark Calloway. We are getting the American badass Undertaker returning to WrestleMania with Kid Rock singing his theme. Rightfully so, man. Can you imagine that? Shit? Imagine, and I pitched this idea. Imagine John Cena. You know, he's seen in the crowd as a fan because he said he's going to WrestleMania as a fan. Imagine him seeing in the crowd. Maybe he grabs a mic. Maybe he starts talking. Maybe he's interacting with the fans. And all of a sudden, we just see Kid Rock walking on the stage. Since slowly. since he won't be a part of the WWE Hall of Fame, he's their celebrity inductee, so it makes sense. Right. It's the perfect timing. And then all of a sudden, you know, he starts playing Undertaker's original American Badass theme, and then we see Undertaker with the Harley Davidson and the American flag. 
Uh, he had uh, a bandana around his head, just riding down the aisle. Can you imagine that shit? What a true WrestleMania moment that would be. And I'm sorry, um, but there's no way that with all this build, we don't get that match. We Absolutely. are getting Undertaker versus Cena. Now, I have a few concerns with the match. I didn't really want to see the match because I think Taker is done. After after, after what we saw last year at WrestleMania, I think that should be the, it. That should be it for the Undertaker, but he is the kind of guy that does deserve two retirement matches. Exactly. Because he does have two characters: one, the Phenom, and two, the American Badass. So why not have two retirement? And matches? he is the only guy rightfully deserving to retire. I just feel like that this match is four years late. It should have happened at WrestleMania 30 when the streak was still intact. This match would be a whole lot better and more investing if the streak was still alive. And the thing is, you know, they easily could have just flopped around their matches. Uh, that they had Casino obviously faced Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 30, which completely killed Bray Wyatt. Um, and obviously Taker lost his streak uh, to Brock Lesnar. Right. Uh, when in in the same building as what? WrestleMania is going to be held at. Right, and that's the thing. Maybe Undertaker is reborn in the same place that he you know, lost his streak in. Just imagine. That kind of fits with the, with the little story there, too. But, yeah, um, they easily could have swapped around the matches with, uh, with Cena and Taker and... Brock and Bray, you know, they keep, they easily could have had Brock Lesnar versus Batista that year. They could, for real, that was a dream match everybody wanted to see. And then you can have Bray Wyatt versus, uh, no, I'm sorry, yeah, you could have had, here's what you should have done, you should have had Undertaker versus Cena versus Man 30, you should have had uh, Batista versus Brock Lesnar. Uh, and then you should have had the Wyatt family versus the Shield at WrestleMania 30. Three big marquee matches that will make WrestleMania 30 even better. Absolutely, fucking lovely. It's not that fucking difficult. And you can still go with Daniel Bryan versus Orton or Daniel Bryan versus Triple H. Yeah, exactly. You could still continue that that uh, Daniel Bryan story. It, it it's it's amazing. We it's just phenomenal. made WrestleMania 30 a lot better than it was. But too so. bad it's four years late. But still, right. this match is still going to be. Interesting is still something it's, that's going to keep you invested. It's probably not going to deliver, especially with Taker's age and how Cena really isn't a guy that can uh, lead a match, can basically deliver a right. match um, and by, by himself. Th th that's the thing, though. Um, this match will probably more likely not live up to the hype. I mean, the match is going to be exciting. The match is... Uh, or the or the build has been exciting. The match, you know, the the fact that we're going to get these two in the ring together is exciting by itself. The match will probably not deliver. Excuse me. Uh, the build has got me extremely excited for this match, though. It's been the build has been fantastic. I'm loving the story. I'm loving the silence, and I think that only means that the Return of the American Badass is coming. Right. Exactly. But I do have a few concerns with this match. Um, before the build started, you know, this match, like we said, should have been done, if, you know, four years ago, and I think the streak should be on the line. WrestleMania 30 with the streak on the line, 30th anniversary of WrestleMania, Cena versus Taker, the match we never got. At, and especially especially when it was the first pay per view that the WWE Network was showcasing. Exactly. That's something that would have gotten people to subscribe. And the thing is, so, something to people to, to tune into. And the thing is, you just imagine, you know, Cena versus Taker with the streak on the line. Imagine, you know, the hype and the excitement and the the frustration and the emotion from the fans. Like, oh my God, is this over? Is Cena winning? Is 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 Taker streak over? Is Taker winning? Like, imagine the emotion. We're not getting that right now. No, we're not. Unfortunately. Seriously. But still, it's, 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 it's an interesting match. It's a match that a lot of people will be invested in. But for this match, even though, like we said, it's not scheduled, it will happen, yeah. without a doubt. We all know it's going to happen. Quite frankly, I understand Taker likes to go out the old school way where, where he loses. Right, like and last he year. Just, he just go, and he just goes out on his motorcycle with his hand raised up and everything. But quite frankly, with how Taker's been losing at WrestleMania, it's kind of like using his matches as a joke now. Kind of like it was with, you know, after his match with... You know, with Lesnar, quite frankly, that should have been his last match. He right. should never wrestle at WrestleMania again because his matches meant would mean nothing. It didn't mean nothing with Bray Wyatt. It didn't mean nothing with Shane McMahon. It did not mean anything with Roman Reigns, and that clearly showed. So this match ain't going to mean nothing. Yeah. But now, the, the, quite frankly, really, I think Taker should win. Yeah. I'm not saying that because I'm a huge Undertaker fan. I'm just saying because WWE should not use his matches at WrestleMania as a joke anymore. This match will definitely not live up to the hype. Um, we all know that, but the fact that we're getting this match is still exciting by itself. Um, I have Cena winning. Uh, there's really no purpose for... I mean, Cena's not done. He's not. Although, I think this should be Cena's last match. Because Cena has nothing else to do except win the 17th World Championship to pass Ric Flair's record. That's really the only thing he has left to do. But, 
this should be seen as because this is the only thing Cena has left to do. Exactly, he's got. He's this got, should be both men's last matches. Career versus career. Exactly. So, really, I have Cena winning. I don't think Cena's done. Um, I think this will definitely help him. You know, advance to eventually winning number seventeen, wherever that will be. Maybe SummerSlam, maybe Royal Rumble, maybe WrestleMania next year. I don't know. Um, but I have Cena winning. Uh, but we are getting Cena versus Taker. I know that. There's no way we don't get the match with all the build. So, right, but anyway, um, guys, that was our NXT TakeOver New Orleans and WrestleMania 34 predictions. Yeah, give your predictions, comments below. And we apologize for the long-ass video. I understand it's, what, 54 minutes now? Holy hell. Uh, but when you're going up against two uh, pay-per-views and match cards and talking about it, you know, it's going to be long. Right. I, I, I'm sure if we didn't talk about TakeOver, the, pro the video probably would have been, what, 40 minutes? Maybe 30, still, 30 about. I mean, which is still, you know, kind of long. But we apologize for the long video. Uh, if you guys watched throughout the end of the video, we appreciate it. If not, then I understand. Um, right. But anyway, guys, that's our WrestleMania, 30, uh, or WrestleMania 34 and NXT TakeOver. New Orleans predictions. Give us your predictions in the comments below. And it uh, should be a very exciting WrestleMania weekend, man. We got the Hall of Fame tomorrow, which should be very uh, interesting to see. Um, we got to actually take over New Orleans and on we have, Saturday. Then we got WrestleMania Sunday night. And we also have the Raw af after WrestleMania, which is always exciting, and the SmackDown Live after WrestleMania. So, very exciting WrestleMania weekend, man. WrestleMania week. So, I I'm excited. I can't wait. Um, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy if you guys are watching. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you later. Peace!